السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam we thank Allah جل وعلا and we ask him to make us from those who are grateful for all the ni'am and bounties that we have Wallahi, I've been traveling around the UK, visiting places, and mashallah, you guys have such a beautiful masjid, a large masjid. And it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you've got to be grateful for. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that if you are grateful, He will increase you. La in shakartum la azidannakum. Also, I take this opportunity to thank Sheikh Alam Ghir as well as all those who are involved in the masjid as well as you all for hosting me and putting this program together I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are forgiven to make us from those whom it is said to them at the end of these gatherings as mentioned in the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says that there are no people who gather to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their intention is only that, except that the gathering is surrounded with mercy and the angels surround this gathering. And at the end of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or it is said to them, Qumu maghfuran lakum, depart whilst your sins have been forgiven. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people. Amin. A question, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that comes up is, as Muslims, are we required to excel and to be the best in our fields? Are we required to have a winning mindset or not? A lot of us, we live mediocre lives. When it comes to our ibadat, we just do that which is the bare minimum, at times not even the bare minimum. When it comes to our interactions with others, we live in a way that is just mediocre nothing great nothing exemplary if you look in the quran you find that allah jalla wa ala, in countless verses he encourages us to be the best in whatever we do especially when it comes to chasing the akhirah so this is the first point my dear brothers and sisters in islam if you want to build confidence if you want victory if you want triumph if you want to be a winner in what you do you've got to change your mindset you've got to listen to what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you speaking about jannah allah jalla wa ala says Wasari'u ila min rabbikum wa jannah. hasten towards the forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as jannah in another verse he says Sabiqu ila min rabbikum wa jannah Sabiqu is from the word musabaqa, to race, to hasten, to precede one another. What does this all mean? This means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be in the forefront. It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking for the best of you. Exert your effort when it comes to your ibadat, when it comes to your salah. What is the advice of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Does he just say come and perform your salah as is and move on? No. In one of the hadith, he says, Salli salata muwaddi'in. When you perform your salah, make sure your salah is like the one who is bidding farewell, i.e. your last salah, so you will perform it in the best possible manner. When it comes to charity, when it comes to giving, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-yadul ulya khayrum min al-yadis sufla. The upper hand, i.e. the hand that gives is better then the lower hand, the hand that receives. What does this show us? That in our ibadat, we've got to strive for excellence. And we firstly start off by having that mindset that this is required of me religiously from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also in your mu'amalat, in your interactions, when speaking with others, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell this ummah? He says, وَقُلِّ عِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَن Tell my worshippers to say what? To say that which is best when you are greeted and you need to return a greeting. Respond in a way that is better, that is best when debating somebody. You're debating with somebody, debate in the best possible manner. This shows us 
that as Muslims, firstly, we are required to exert ourselves and try to be the best in whatever we do, our ibadat, our interactions in the dunya, etc. A person may ask, how do I become excellent or how do I strive for this excellence? People will give you a lot of answers. But as a Muslim, if you remember one saying of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you practice upon this saying, Bi'ithnillah, you will be a person who is always striving for this excellence. In the hadith of Jibreel that we all know, a long hadith narrated by Umar radiallahu anhu, Jibreel comes to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asks him questions. In one of the questions that he asks him, he says, what is Ihsan? And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replies, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهَ to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you are seeing him. فَإِلَّمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ If you cannot do that, i.e. you cannot worship him as though you are seeing him, then know he is watching you. What does this entail, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam? If you had to ponder and reflect over the statement of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you would find that a person who lives his life trying to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him of course he's going to strive for excellence when it comes to his salah even if he's alone at home he knows that I am performing this salah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's interacting with others he knows that he is interacting in the best possible way because he wants the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's not looking for any worldly gain and when we understand and realize that this excellence is required from us religiously, it's not enough for a person to say, okay, today we heard a talk of me being better, me being excellent. I'm going to, uh, you know, be top in my ibadat as well as my mu'amalat, as well as my health, etc. It's not enough to just wish. A person has to put it into practice. There's many stories in the Quran. One of them I want to touch on today is the story of Dawood alayhi salam. Towards the end of the second juz, Allah jalla wa ala makes mention of Banu Israel. And he says that he had appointed a king for them. This king was known as Talut. Allah says, Talut and his army were on the way. فَلَمَّا فَصَلَ طَالُوتُ بِالْجُنُودِ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُبْتَلِيكُمْ بِنَهَرِ Talut tells his army, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test you with a river. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test you with a river. What was required of them? He tells them that you are not supposed to drink from this river. فَمَنْ شَرِبَ مِنْهُ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Whoever drinks from the river is not from amongst me. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَطْعَمْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي Whoever doesn't drink or he just takes, as some of the scholars say, a gargle and he spits it out, then he is from me. Some of the scholars mention that this was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see which people would be able to be patient, which one of them would have discipline. And that's the first point, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. You want to be a winner, you have to have self-discipline. And that's why when you look at what of, uh, some of the scholars mentioned here, they said that because they were going to battle, they were going to an extremely difficult place. The fact that this smaller test before the battle showed that there were those who could not be patient. How do you expect them to be patient? How do you expect them to be obedient and obey the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at battle? Hence he told them, if you can't have that self-discipline from before, how do you expect to be victorious? So similarly, in your day-to-day -day lives, when it comes to your salah, when it comes to your zakah, when it comes to your obedience of parents when it comes to interacting with the family at home etc be somebody who has that discipline Allah Jalla wa ala then makes mention of how the army those who didn't drink they carried on and they went forth eventually they see the army of Goliath the army of Jalut some of them they say we stand no chance against this army. We stand no chance. 
and there are others who say kam min fi'atin qalilatin ghalabat fi'atan kathiratan bi idhnillah there are others who say how many a time a small army is able to overpower and overcome a large army and this is the second point i want you to take away when you want to be a winner you have to have a positive mindset when everybody else sees gloom and doom you know that You've got to be positive and بِإِذْنِلَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your doors for you. There were two groups of people. They seeing exactly the same thing. Exactly the same. There are those who think we have no chance and there are those who think no. Hold on a second. There are people who came before and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them victory. What about us? Surely He will grant us that victory. The third point that we derive from this story is the importance of making dua and being attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want triumph, you want victory, you want to be a winner, you have to be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this army say after uttering or after saying that how many times? Come in fi'atin qalilatin ghalabat fi'atan kathiratan bi idhnillah wallahu ma'as sabirin. Allah is with those who are patient. Allah says they eventually get into battle. Walamma barazu li jaluta wa junoodih. What do they say? Do they say we're too strong? We have uh, good people, we have large people, we have good artillery, etc. No. وَلَمَّا بَرَزُوا لِجَالُوتَ وَجُنُودِهِ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبْرًا Immediately they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking Him to give them patience and to keep them steadfast. And similarly, we've got to realize whatever goodness comes your way in life is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from Him alone. It's not due to our wealth. It's not due to our intelligence. It's not due to our connections. Those are all means. It ultimately comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, after a person realizes that it's important to have a winning mindset, it's important for uh, the person themselves to be disciplined, to be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to look at the positives, the person may say, Okay, I have a good message. I have something good to share with people. How do I start? Addressing the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Ya ayyuhar Rasul, O Messenger, Ballig ma unzila ilayka min Rabbik. Convey that which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has revealed to you. This was wahi. This was revelation. In another verse, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He says, don't worry about the people. Wallahu ya'asimuka minan nas. And don't fear the people. You've got something good to give. Or you've got something good to do. A good initiative. Don't be shy. Go forth. The address to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to convey the goodness that he had. Look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. It's recorded in the hadith that some of the Ansar, the senior Sahaba, they asked Umar radiallahu anhum. They said, why is it that you bring this youngster? Who was the youngster? Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. Why do you bring him to the gathering of the seniors? And they reply, uh, he replies, he says, this child knows that which others do not know, including themselves. And he wanted to show them. He says, O oh son of Abbas, what do you say of the surah, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ those who were around, they answered, they gave a general meaning. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and he's a youngster, maybe about 10, 11, 12, roughly there. He says that this surah is an indication from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the life of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is coming to an end. What's the point I want to get at? Here the youngster, one who was, one who was very small amongst the seniors, he's speaking. He's interacting with them. He's welcome in their gatherings. So what about us? We have got to have an environment where we encourage those who are young as well as those who are old. Whatever goodness you've got, come and share it. And this is not only when it comes to Islamic knowledge, even general knowledge, something of benefit. You have a skill that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. Teach others. There's two ahadith I'll mention for you. It's recorded in Sahih al-Bukhari that Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. He says one day we were sitting with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asks those in the gathering that there is a tree and this tree is similar to a believer and he asks them name the tree. What is the tree? There were seniors, senior Sahaba who were also there. So he says, the people started mentioning different trees, different names, exotic trees, those which are from uh, the Bawadi, the villages, etc. And he says, I thought in my heart that it is the palm tree, but I didn't speak. What's this? This is just a general knowledge question. I thought it was the palm tree, but I didn't speak. Eventually, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam informs them that it is the palm tree. He says, and I went and I was with my father, Umar radiallahu anhu. And I told him that, you know, this question, I had the answer for it, but I didn't speak. Umar radiallahu anhu says, how I wish you had spoken, knowing that firstly, he had the knowledge, he knew what it was. And number two, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam would have probably made dua for him for so much goodness. So similarly at times when you are shy and you don't want to share that goodness that you have with others, you yourself may be at a loss in this world or in the next. At times you may not be sinful, but you may lose out on a higher position in this world as well as in Jannah. The second hadith I want to touch on speaking about general knowledge or good knowledge. It also includes Islamic knowledge. We all know the hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when a person dies, all his deeds come to an end. In amaluhu illa min thalath. Then he mentions, illa min sadaqatin jariyah, aw ilmi yuntafa'u bih. First is sadaqa jariyah, any charity that is continuous, that carries on, like a waqf, for example. A person's died, but the masjid that he built, or the well that he dug, people are still benefiting from it. Hence, he is rewarded. The second is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, any beneficial knowledge that he left behind. Some of the scholars of Hadith, when explaining this, they mention, yes, first and foremost, Islamic knowledge. Any Islamic knowledge you had, you taught others, after you passed away, they benefited from this knowledge, inshallah, you will be rewarded. Some of them go a step further and they say this includes any beneficial knowledge, even if it's worldly knowledge. And the fadl and virtue and kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vast. The virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is vast. You saw a youngster, for example, and you gave him some confidence. You taught him a new skill. You taught him something which would benefit him in this dunya as well as in the akhirah. Bi'ithnillah, you will be rewarded. And if he teaches others, that chain of reward will carry on. So be from those who, whatever goodness you have, don't be shy to share it with others. After a person realizes, as we mentioned, the first point that you've got to have a winning mindset, you've got to be somebody who they themselves want to improve. You've got to be somebody who goes out and helps others. It's inevitable that you will face obstacles and obstacles come in many different forms. The first and most major, the hardest is obviously Iblis, the devil, Shaitan. Whatever goodness you want to convey, whatever goodness you have, whatever goodness you want to share, he will try his best to prevent you from that goodness and sharing that goodness. That's why one of the scholars, when he was writing uh, of how Iblis works on the son of Adam, he mentioned something very interesting. He says, he firstly wants the son of Adam to commit shirk so he can be punished forever in the hereafter. If not, he tries to get him to innovation. If not, he tries to make him do that which is just Mubah, which is just permissible, i.e. he's not sinful or not being rewarded. If not, he tries, let's say a person is doing an act of worship or a good deed, which is extremely good. So if he can't get to this person in terms of shirk and bid'ah and mubah, he tries to make him leave that which is more beneficial for that which is less beneficial. Two good deeds, but obviously one is much better than the other. One is much better than the other. So you've got to remember that whatever you may do, or whatever you intend on doing in terms of goodness, the enemy, shaitan, will always be out and he will try to get you. 
also you've got to ask yourself you have a skill you've got something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you whether it's knowledge whatever it may be this is a skill from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be asked about it you will be asked you had this piece of knowledge did you use it did you teach it or were you somebody who held back and people hold back for various reasons as we mentioned so that's number one point number two is the nafs itself has its desires that's why on the 13th juz when yusuf alayhi salam is declared innocent some say yusuf alayhi salam says this others say it's uh, the wife of the aziz the verse of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wama ubarri'u nafsi he says you know i I don't claim myself to have no fault. The soul itself, the nafs itself is inclined towards evil. So you've got to fight your nafs and you've got to fight your desire. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. The third is you may find obstacles and you may find enemies from those around you. So people in your community people who are further out Allah Jalla wa Ala says every single Nabi we made for them enemies min al -mujrim. every single Nabi had enemies and they were the best that ever lived so what about us you've got something good to convey you've something you've got something good to give there will be those who will try to pull you down they will make fun of you they will call you names so much so addressing the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah jalla wa ala says وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُوا أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ We know, O oh messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that what the people say in terms of their mocking and their slander etc it makes you sad, it makes your chest narrow don't worry, what should you do? increase in your worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ be from those who Glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from those who constantly perform salah. I.e. the more people attack and harm you, be a person who is even closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's bound to happen and it will happen. At times you want to change but or you want to have a positive effect on others. However, due to circumstance, you may be unable to. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't stop. Look at the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was first given revelation and he was told to convey the message. He started his da'wah and it was in secret. People didn't know. They would go to the house of Al-Arqam. Eventually the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi, uh, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is told now to convey the message to everybody. Make it apparent. And he conveys the message and the persecution continues. The kuffar of Quraysh are even worse when it comes to their torture of the Muslims. What does the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? What is he ordered to do? Is he ordered to just sit in Makkah, sit back? No. He's ordered to tell some of the early Muslims to migrate to Habasha. Why? Because there is a king there who doesn't oppress, even though he's a non-Muslim. An Najashi. What does this teach you? This teaches you that when you think that your path has been blocked, look for alternatives. So they went to Habasha twice. And after that, they still went to Medina. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ordered to go to Medina. Why? He's got a noble message that he needs to convey. And the environment he is in is not allowing at the moment. And eventually he comes into Mecca years later. As we know, Fatih Makkah, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes in years later and the Muslims are victorious. So similarly, this change that you may embark on and this goodness that you want to spread, you will face opposition, it will be difficult and you may not see the fruits of your efforts except later on. And sometimes maybe not in your lifetime, but in the next generation but your reward be ibnillah will be with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your reward will be with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes a person says that i am a sinner i've been far away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what should i do 
You know, people feel guilty. Shaitan makes them feel guilty. You've done so much evil or you've got certain bad habits. How is it that you are going to teach others goodness? Allah Jalla wa Ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Addressing his servants, he says, Oh my servants, do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sin. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving, the most merciful. And at times you find a person may commit a sin or make a mistake and they sit in a slump, they sit depressed. Like the whole world has come to an end. As a Muslim, it's required for you to regret when it comes to the sin and make tawbah. But after that, you carry on, carry on doing the good that you were doing. Don't let that sin or that mistake you made stop you from goodness. Look at Sulaiman alayhi salam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him, some of the scholars mention that his horses were shown to him and he was occupied with his horses. Hence he missed a salah. Others mention, or in the same verses, it's mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him because he said he wanted to do something and he didn't say insha'Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a body on his throne. Eventually Sulaiman alayhi salam realizes that he's made a mistake. What does he do? He asks for forgiveness. He says, Qala Rabbi ghfirli. But he doesn't stop there. He says, Wahabli and give me. If it's one of us, we would, after making a mistake, we would think that, you know what? Any little goodness that comes my way is okay. Sulaiman alayhi salam knows who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. He's just asked for forgiveness. Then he says, Wahabli mulkan la yambaghi li ahadim min ba'di. Give me kingdom that nobody will have after me. Give me kingdom that nobody will have after me. The point I'm, I'm getting at is he sought forgiveness and he asks for the most. He asks for the best. So similarly, you may make a mistake in life. We are all human beings. Make tawbah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you and move on. Rectify that mistake. But don't make that mistake a cause for others not benefiting from your goodness. To end off, my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, there's one point I want to mention. A lot of us, we hear the saying where people say you only live once. So you find somebody who doesn't look after themselves. They say, you know what, you only live once. Or somebody who is extremely lazy and they say you only live once. Why not? We as Muslims should actually be looking at it the other way to say, the fact that we only live once means that we should live a life of excellence. And as you know, on the day of Qiyamah, the people of Jannah, as, as is mentioned by some of the scholars, even after they've entered Jannah, it will be levels, levels. And they would regret, regret what? The good deeds they didn't do. Why? Because every good deed may be the reason for you having ascended another level. Every good deed, that, a good deed that you may look down upon, that may be the reason why you are one level lower than where you are supposed to be. You know, when you give a material example, people understand the difference between a person who is walking, a little bit better, he's riding a bicycle, a little bit better, he's got a normal car, a little bit better, he's got a super car, a little bit better, he's got his own private jet, etc. This is the dunya we're looking at and we can see apparently that there is a huge difference between the one, this we're talking monetarily, there's a huge difference between the one at the bottom and the one at the top. So what about when it comes to the akhirah? What about when it comes to Jannah? There will be a difference in levels for the people of Jannah. And as you've all read and you've heard in the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how people will be at different levels and every level will be so amazing, so different. And as he says, Jannah is a place that 
no eye has seen, no person can imagine, etc. No ear has heard. So be from those who work for this Jannah and be from those who please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever they do. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, once again, I thank you for having me and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the short or the few words we heard, we ask him to make them words of benefit. And we ask him to make us from those who establish a winning mindset in such a way that pleases him. We ask him to make us from those who are used to serve the deen. At times a person may be talented. At times a person may have knowledge. At times a person may have certain goodness with him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided that he will not use this person to carry out that good. At times a person may be rejected. Apparently he may have everything. Apparently when you look at him, he may have learned so much. Or he may have so much wealth, but he wasn't given the quality of spending. He wasn't. So ask yourself every time a good deed, an opportunity for a good deed comes and you're unable to do it, ask yourself, is this me being prevented by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of something I did, because of some sin, why am I being prevented? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are the best in this world. We ask him to grant us the best in this world and we ask him to gather us all in the highest parts of Jannah. Ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahu Allahu Allah Allah